the general lecture on developing STEM learning material to begin. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. To the honorable, the keynote speaker of general lecture on developing STEM learning material, Mrs. Dr. Sharon Luke from Southern Illinois University Edwards Farm, United States of America. To the Honorable, the Vice Dean of the Faculty of Teacher Training and Education for Human Resources, Assets and General Administration, Mrs. Dr. Aini Susanti, MPD BI. The Honorable, the Representative from Southeast Asian Minister Education for Organization or CMU, Mrs. E. Gusti Ayu Rusa Smita Sri Pat. To the Honorable, the Head of Mathematic Education Study Program at Ahmad Dalan University, Mr. Dr. Pugu Wahyu Prastio, MSc. To the Honorable Lectures of Mathematics Education Department and also all Lectures of Faculty of Teaching Training and Education at Ahmad Dalan University. As well what we are proud of, the general lecture on developing STEM learning materials. These general lectures raise the theme developing STEM learning materials. Ladies and gentlemen, let us introduce ourselves. I am Arjetitan Widyasmara from Mathematics Education Study Program and I'm Pondato Rahunci, also from Mathematics Education Study Program, Batch 21. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Let us thank to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, who has bestowed His mercy and grace, so that we can be present at this place in good health. Salawat and greetings continue to be acceptable for our Lord, great Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The perfection of Islamic teaching is known as Rahmatan Lil Alamin and Tauladan Ahlakul Karima. Dear ladies and gentlemen, let us begin the event this morning by reciting the Basmalah together. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ladies and gentlemen, let us listen and pay attention to the recitation of the verses the Holy Quran by Muhammad Nafis Andener from Mathematics Education Study Program, page 21. Please welcome. Cik cik. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh A'udhu billahi minasyaitanir wajim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Falamma ra'awhu zulfatan Si'at wujuhu alladhina kafaru Bismillahirrahmanirrahim 
Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Let's sing the Indonesian National Anthem Indonesia Raya Follow by the song Sang Surya Maludira Rahmawati The Floor Is Yours And the audience is us to stand up
attendants are allowed to sit down. The report from the head of Mathematics Education Study Program, Ahmad Dalan University, Mr. Dr. Pugu Wahyu Prastio, MSc. Mr. Pugu Wahyu Prastio, or a representative, please welcome. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning for all participants on this room, in this room. The Honorable Dr. Sharon Locke uh, from Southern Illinois University at Watchville, United States of America. The Honorable, the Vice Dean of the Faculty of Teacher Training and Education for Human Resources, Assets and Administration, Dr. Annie Susanti, MPDBI. The Honorable, the representative from Southeast ASEAN Minister Education Organization, CIMEO, Mrs. I, uh, I Gusti Ayu Rusasmita Sri Padmi. The Honorable Lecturers of Mathematics Education Department and all lecturers of Faculty of Teacher Training and Education of Universitas Abadalan who attend here, distinguished guests, committees and students, and all participants. First of all, I would like to invite everyone to express our gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of his blessing we can uh, gather together uh, in this room in order to attend the general lecture on development of STEM learning materials and academic writings. With our distinguished uh, uh, speaker, Dr. Saran Lok. Salawat and salam may always be directed to our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Today we will have two sections. The first sec, uh, the first one is the general lecture on the development of STEM learning materials. This section is uh, designed for both lecturers and students. Uh, since mathematics is the foundation for science, technology, and engineering. Its work is generally used in STEM to find pattern in data. This pattern can be used to test relationship, take general conclusion about the data, and model the real world. It is important to note that while the traditional way of teaching mathematics is indeed essential, for example, by explaining it through the STEM model is different and provides additional education uh, educational benefits. STEM is a comprehensive approach that ties the individual discipline so that learning becomes connected, focused, relevant, and meaningful to learners. And today we are really happy to have Dr. Sarah Locke here to share her experience on developing uh, STEM learning material. For the second one, we will have academic writing and this section will be designed for lecturers. Academic writing becomes a skill that all lecturers and researchers should have. Academic writing is combination of producing, codifying, transmitting, evaluating, renovating, teaching and learning knowledge and ideology in academic disciplines. Being able to write in academic style is essential for us uh, and actually for academic success. So this section will be followed by our lecture to enhance the academic uh, writing skill. I representing the Mathematics Education Department thanks to uh, Southeast ASEAN Minister Education Organizations uh, for the support so that this lecture can be handled. So ladies and gentlemen, don't miss any second of this uh, essential lecture for us. We present to you Dr. Salen Lok. Applause for her. Yeah, thank you very much. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. We would like to thank Mr. Dr. Pugu Wahyu Prasetyo, MSc, the Chairman of the Ahmad Dalai University Mathematics Education Study Program, who delivered his speech. The opening speech will be delivered by the Vice Dean of the Faculty of Teacher Training 
and Education for Human Resource, ASEP, and General Administration, Mrs. Dr. Ani Susanti, MPPPI. Or her representative, the time is yours. Okay, thank you very much um, for the Mr. and Mrs. MC. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Our distinguished guest, Dr. Sharon Locke from Southern Illinois University, Edwardsville, United States of America, and my the Honorable the head of mathematics education of teacher training and education of faculty of uh, faculty of teacher training and education Universitas Ahmad Dahlan Dr. Bugo Wahyu Prasetyo Master of Science and the secretary of the study program uh, Ibu Dwi and also here welcome to uh, Miss Tata from CMU Kitab First of all, I'd like to welcome everybody here attending the event, uh, the keynote speaker especially, um, how should I call you, Miss uh, Dr. Locke. Dr. Locke, welcome to Jogja, welcome to Sharon. Ibu Sharon. <laughs> Ibu Sharon, you prefer to, uh, we call you Ibu Sharon. Welcome to Jogja, welcome to UAD. Uh, on behalf of UAD, I warmly uh, welcome you here. This is our fourth campus. UAD has uh, six campus, and this is the main campus. And we, for mathematics education, we have bachelor program and also magister program. And those who are attending here are students from bachelor program. Um, Unfortunately, the students just finished their final exam, so maybe those attending here are those who are still staying in Jogja. Some of the students returned to their hometown, but um, uh, we are happy those attending here are mixed from first year until the fourth year. They can roll out the information of today's event to their college, I believe. Uh, this event, ladies and gentlemen, is the collaboration, uh, part of the collaboration between uh, UAD, Faculty of Teacher Training and Education, especially the mathematics education with the Semeo Kitab in Math. Thank you very much. I think this is not the first time yeah, for, for us to have this collaboration and I'm sure that uh, we, we will have further and more detailed, more productive collaboration in the future. And also for the Aminef support, because one, one of the sponsors of today's event is also from the Aminef. Thank you very much. Uh, and ladies and gentlemen, we know that the topic is uh, best selected by the committee because STEM here uh, is probably not something new in mathematics or science field, but to some students, to some lectures here, probably they need to learn more. So we do hope that after this talk, we can have more understandings about the STEM itself, how it uh, it will be integrated to solve problems in in the society, in the uh, in the field with multiple solutions. Uh, we believe that the with uh, good, uh, well-prepared, appropriate learning materials, the student will learn more, will be more creative, will be more uh, active in finding more solutions for the problem they will face now and in the future especially also to grow their demand skills for the moment, like uh, connecting skills, critical thinking skills, literacy skills, and etc. Uh, we hope that this is a one hour or, or two hours talk. Two hours? One hour. One hour talk. One hour talk will be um, give more insights to everyone here lectures for students so that in the future we can
prepare the best way, the best approach to the students in any level we approach with the best or the appropriate learning uh, materials, especially the STEM enhanced learning materials. Uh, on what, uh, before I close, I would like to appreciate to the committee to prepare all of the technical things, all of the detail. Later on, uh, Dr. Afid will be the uh, moderator uh, as well as interpreter if needed to the students so that the discussions can be more alive. And uh, here I declare the talk uh, of today's topic on developing STEM learning materials officially open. Thank you very much. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. We would like to thank Mrs. Dr. Anu Susanti, MPDBI, as the Vice Dean of the Faculty of Teacher Training and Education for Human Resources, Assets, and General Administration at Ahmad Dalan University for delivering his remarks. The first session of the general lecture on developing STEM learning material, which will be conducted with the moderator, Mr. Afid Istiandaru MPG. The floor is yours.
you can come here or you can uh, join the audience here. Oh. It's also up to you. Okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Dear lecturers and also students, welcome to this uh, first session of uh, the general lecture uh, with the title is Development of STEM Materials and Academic Writing. But for the first session, we have general lecture first and today we uh, have Dr. Sharon Locke here with us uh, from uh, Southern Illinois University at Wurzville. And um, here, I think for one hour, uh, including the question and answer session, we will have a small talks uh, and also have a presentation from her. And uh, probably if during uh, the presentations you have a question, please, you can memorize it, you can uh, write down, and then when we have the question and answer session, you can ask uh, freely, right? So uh, this presentation will be held in Bahasa Inggris. Yeah, so I think, I do believe that you could understand, but then in the question and answer session, if you think that you need to ask in Bahasa Indonesia, please do. Yeah, and I will help you to uh, translate or to interpret your question so that we can understand uh, together your question. And if you think that I need to uh, emphasize what Dr. Locke said to you in Bahasa, it is also okay. <laughs> so please uh, not uh, letting English as the barrier of this presentation, right? I think, uh, yeah. Okay, so I think uh, in one hour we will have uh, this presentation and you can start now. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone who's attending. Thank you to the honorable members of the administration. I'm very happy to be here, very honored to be here. Thank you for your introductions. Uh, especially thank you students for coming. I understand you've maybe finished uh, some of your classes, so perhaps you don't want to be at a lecture right now, but uh, I hope I can make it interesting for you. Uh, w will you let me know if you think something should be translated? Yeah, it's because it's okay, I'm used to that. Yeah, okay. Um. Okay, my talk today, I'm going to talk a little bit about the STEM Center where I work. It's a center for STEM education in Illinois. Uh, then I'm going to talk about uh, maybe provide um, a couple of definitions of STEM education again, just to emphasize what STEM ed education is. Then I'll give you some example of the principles that we use to develop our STEM education materials. And please uh, think, please I welcome questions, so yes, please write them down and I'll be happy to answer them at the end of the session. So this is my staff at the Center for STEM Education at Southern Illinois University Edwardsville. And one of our main goals at the center is to bring STEM learning to children in the region where our university is. So for example, uh, we have a very diverse region. We have a variety of racial and ethnic um, children. And many of the schools do not have enough resources, uh, enough equipment to teach STEM. So our center has the mission to bring those materials to schools that need them. You think you need to do any translating? No. Okay. Okay. Um, what's the best way? Yeah. Okay. I wanted to just show a, you a picture of where Illinois is. It's the yellow dot on this map. Illinois is in the middle of the United States, so we're far from the ocean, unlike here in Indonesia. We have a long way to go to get to the ocean, um, but we're uh, at the, next to the Mississippi River, and 
Um, if you follow the Mississippi River down, it goes down, um, all the way down to Illinois. Actually, if I do this, I can do this, yeah, yeah. So this is the Mississippi River, and it follows all the way down here to the Gulf of Mexico. Illinois is known for its agriculture. So we have a lot of farms, very large farms, and we farm corn and soybeans, especially. And the soybeans are put on barges near where our university is, and they're transported to the ocean and then to China. So we export a lot of soybeans. I thought you might be interested to see some pictures of my university campus. This is the campus in all different seasons. So <clears throat> up here is the autumn or the fall when the maple trees are changing their le leaf colors from green to yellows and reds. And then here is the spring and this is uh, some magnolia trees and this is the building where I work, Science East Building. Here's a photo from my office and we have a lot of animals, especially deer, on our campus. So in the spring you see a lot of little baby deer. And then here it is, this was this past November, and we had about seven inches of snow. So very beautiful. Still okay? Okay. <clears throat> we are one center of over 200 STEM education centers in the United States. Uh, my center is in red. And then the other centers are the other stars. Each of these centers is associated with a university. So the goal is to connect university scientists and mathematicians with, uh, with um, schools, so for example. So we are one of 200. Uh, so STEM education became very popular in the United States and about 2000 and I'm not sure if it originated in the United States but maybe and it was based on STEM government reports and originally STEM was just what we call an acronym or an abbreviation so it just was an abbreviation for science technology engineering and math but then um, it became it, um, the, its current meeting, which is integration. So, um, saya mencoba ini ya, apa namanya, uh, menyampaikan ringkasnya ya. Jadi STEM itu sudah sangat, uh, apa namanya, uh, populer di Amerika Serikat begitu ya, dan sudah sejak lama begitu ya. Jadi, uh, what, apa namanya, di sini setidaknya uh, ada beberapa dokumen-dokumen laporan dari pemerintah yang terkait dengan STEM begitu. Nah, tadi sudah dijelaskan banyak, nah sekarang beliau akan menjelaskan uh, tentang detail dari STEM tersebut begitu ya. Okay. Please. And these two reports were put out by the government because of the concern that there would be not enough workers with training in science, technology, engineering, and math to meet the needs of our workforce. And so the government asked that universities and schools increase STEM education. This is a nice diagram, just uh, maybe you've learned about STEM in schools. In, in your classes, but this shows the idea of integration and STEM education. The main goal is to solve a problem and to solve the problem using all of the different disciplines. Jadi tujuan utama STEM itu kan memecahkan masalah ya, dan keywordsnya adalah integrasi. Integrasi dari domain-domain yang tampak di layar, uh, apa namanya, matematika, science, dan seterusnya, tapi tujuan utama yang di tengah itu. Solve problems. Yeah. Can you think of a complex problem that requires all of these to use all of these disciplines? Coba apa pikirkan istilahnya subjek, disiplins apa namanya yang bisa diintegrasikan di sini? Complex. 
kompleks problem yang kemudian mengintegrasikan seluruh apa uh, disiplin-disiplin dari STEM begitu. I'll give an example. Um, what about trying to send uh, humans to Mars and to live on Mars? <laughs> okay. Okay. This example is from of STEM education is one of my favorite definitions. And I'll just, I've highlighted in bold the, the parts that are important. So STEM education means intentional integration of the four areas. And STEM education is student-centered. You know, they know what that means, yeah. Um, STEM education, in STEM education, you are looking at solutions to problems. The focus is on real-world problems real world, world phenomena, um, but also um, we focus also on uh, meeting the student's social, emotional, physical, and academic needs. And I'll talk more about that later, uh, but the idea is that we're not just teaching STEM education for the students to learn science and math, but also other aspects of their development. And then <coughs> last, the ideal STEM education involves contributions from the community and families to uh, promote the best STEM education for the children. Here's just some examples of what we do. So again, our center is on a university and we teach STEM to children of any age. On the left is a program we have with high school students in an area near us called East St. Louis. And then on the right, we're doing robot activities with preschool children, early childhood children. We developed activities that schools ask us to bring into the community, and we made these posters uh, to try to make them more interesting <laughs> for children. So on everything from magnets to understanding polymers, to designing for disaster, which means designing f to withstand an earthquake or wind, uh, to studies about biofuels. For example, how do you uh, develop renewable energy sources? And then the one CSI mosaic. Do you have that here, CSI, the, the <laughs> TV show? <laughs> um, it's a study of forensics, forensic science. <coughs> One of the important things about our center is that we have materials for loan because many of our schools don't have the materials they need to teach STEM. So we have a library. This is a picture of our lending library. It's a library not just for books and curriculum, but also for equipment. So on the left, they, these are what are called nano wind turbines. And you can use them to teach about how the different angles of blades in a windmill change the energy and uh, that's generated. So we loan these out as well. And the teachers, this is a picture of our inventory on the right, one of our storage rooms. And when a teacher comes to visit, they are very excited because they see everything that we have to loan for free. And then they can also go online and they can search. For example, these are the robots that we have available. And robots are our most popular uh, thing that we loan. <laughs> also, we have consulted with schools to design STEM classrooms. And the most important thing about a classroom for STEM education is that there are different types of spaces for the students to work in and that the um, tables can be moved around so that you, the students can work in groups. So for example, this uh, traditional lecture is not the best way to teach STEM education with a theater style, we would say. Here, um, the students can, uh, they can, 
sorry for the left hand. They can uh, sit on these balls here, cushy balls. They can move these tables around. There's even some high tables back here, like at a cafe. And then we have over here on the right, this is, these are whiteboards they can just write on. We have movable whiteboards. They can move them anywhere they want to. They can write on the wall. The wall actually has paint that allows them to write on the walls. So the goal here is to spark creativity. <coughs> I don't know if you've seen this from the U.S. National Research Council, but this is uh, the competencies that we, um, that the United States asks for students in the 21st century. So these competencies connect with STEM education. I'm sorry if it's a little small for those of you in the back. Um, so in addition to cognitive, which is what we think of, right, knowledge, we also want um, students to understand how to solve a problem and to solve it creatively. Second is intrapersonal. So um, the competencies of yourself so being open to intellectual differences and challenges and having curiosity. Also having a strong work ethic. And then finally having a positive sense of self. Um, confidence that you can be successful. And I understand that in Indonesia right now, um, much of, of STEM education focuses on science and math, content knowledge. Uh, but really, in the United States, um, we, we emphasize many of the other things besides content knowledge. Of course, we want strong content knowledge, but, but we also would like uh, some of these other competencies. Thank you. Jadi, yang penting di sini ya, teman-teman, bahwa ada tiga hal, yang itu terintegrasi di STEM, kita bisa ambil, apa namanya, teori-teori yang mendukung STEM gitu ya, kognitif, intrapersonal, dan interpersonal yang penting. Jadi selain kognitif, ada proses kognitif, strategi kognitif, pengetahuan, kreativitas yang pentingnya, dan kemudian intrapersonal, e, mereka juga dalam STEM mengajarkan keterbukaan intelektual, kemudian etik dalam bekerja, kemudian juga nilai-nilai e, positif ya di apa self-evaluation, evaluasi diri begitu. Juga yang terakhir interpersonal, ada teamwork, ada kolaborasi, ya, dan ada kepemimpinan. Jadi penting sekali bahwa nilai-nilai itu uh, ada di STEM, gitu ya. Okay. Then the last two there are teamwork and collaboration. So STEM education, the students are working in groups. And also leadership development, that they develop their skills to, to lead projects. Okay. So when we look at the characteristics of a good STEM lesson, so if you are going to develop a STEM lesson as a teacher, these are some of the things to keep in mind to consider. So first, of course, you need the core science and math content that's appropriate for the grade level. Second, though, the best STEM education presents the students with a real problem so it may be a problem in society. It may be uh, a broader problem, uh, such as how to build a bridge, as an example. Uh, but it's a real problem that they can relate to. Third, uh, there should be multiple ways to solve the problem. So perhaps what's different in STEM education is there's no, um, many times there's no correct answer, or there's, on, there's not only one correct answer. Sorry. <laughs> Student-centered, the teacher is more of a coach and facilitator. And this can be very difficult for teachers to uh, let go of some of the control of their classroom. Yeah. Uh, also, failure is part of the process in STEM education, so it's okay to fail. This is a very different cultural shift in the United States even. We have found in our research that children are afraid to fail 
And so we make STEM education so that it's okay. It's part of the process. Okay. Jadi hal penting juga ini adalah ciri-ciri STEM yang bagus ya. Jadi pembelajaran STEM yang bagus punya ciri-ciri ini diambil dari Joni 2017 ini ya. Jadi mengintegrasikan dan menerapkan uh, apa materi pada uh, matematika dan IPA begitu ya yang ada di uh, uh, misalnya SMP atau SMA begitu ya itu penting satu. Dan yang kedua Masalah yang diajukan atau yang diangkat adalah masalah yang real Jadi real problem Kemudian tadi dikatakan bahwa e, Untuk memecahkan masalah itu bisa berbagai cara Juga hasilnya pun juga bisa e, apa berbagai hasil yang sama-sama benar Nah itu juga e, penting Kemudian tentu berpusat pada siswa Kemudian guru itu perannya sebagai fasilitator ya Bukan hanya penyampaian materi Kemudian kalaupun toh gagal itu juga kegagalan merupakan uh, bagian dari proses ya bukan berarti gagal semua. Kemudian juga ada teamwork dan uh, ada aplikasinya dalam kehidupan sehari-hari. Jadi penting sekali untuk uh, kita tahu ciri-ciri dari pembelajaran STEM yang baik. Uh, this is an important diagram. This is often one of the parts of a STEM education lesson that students are using the design process. This says engineering design process, but design happens in other fields too. And it's a cycle where you are given a research problem, then you have to understand the research problem, develop possible solutions, select one solution to test, build a prototype, test it, and then redesign if it doesn't work the first time. Do you need to translate or not? No. Okay. Yeah. So you may have seen these simple, like, simple activities. If, uh, so if you have, I apologize, but I'll give some examples here. So these are simple activities done, um, can, can be done in elementary age. For example, an egg drop, and where the students are asked to design um, um, a, a package that will keep an egg safe when it's dropped from a distance of two meters. Yeah. Um, another one is um, building a paper bridge using just um, office paper and two books that can hold some, uh, some items that are pretty heavy. These are American pennies, but you could use it with coins. Uh, in each of these, uh, the activity of building is it takes a lot of trial and error uh, and failure. <laughs> but then also there are many things that you can do with mathematics. Um, <clears throat> you can, uh, for example, calculate forces, uh, velocity in the case of the egg drop, um, and the mass that a bridge can hold in the case of the paper bridges. I'll talk a little bit more about the egg drop just because I want to show how it applies to the idea of a STEM lesson. So uh, protection of packages is a real problem in the world. Everything from car crashes to disaster relief. So being able to break the fall of an item as it's falling is important. I'm going to try to show this video, see if it works. Ah, uh, sorry. <laughs> Can you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so this is a real world problem of protecting a package. So when you start an a lesson such as the egg drop lesson, you start with an interesting video so that the students understand the problem.
Oh, it's a little long. <laughs> so they have to protect the rover as it lands on Mars, right? So that's the idea behind this. So you can talk to the students about the need for the parachute to drop the fall. Then you can see they have this in these inflated balloons around the rover so that when it lands on Mars, um, it has to protect it as it bounces and before it comes to a stop. Yeah, so the, they're saying at Mission Control, they, the spacecraft, the, uh, the rover has to survive all of those bounces. Ah, the suspense is building. Is it safe? Okay, so. <laughs> so so the point is that um, if you tell a student to design something to protect an egg, th it might not seem very interesting. But when you show them this, this video, maybe then some of them want to become engineers for NASA, yeah? <laughs> All right. Uh, so we'll do that, and then back to the... Okay, <coughs> so this, uh, this is what the activity looks like. Um, and it, it's, it's quite simple to do, but again, the students work in group to build a device to protect an egg. And you can make the relationship between um, dropping uh, disaster relief or the Mars, the Mars example. And they have to use physics principles to think about and to work out the problem itself and then think of possible ways to protect the egg, and then draw a design, and then test it. And of course, it's a lot of fun to test the eggs dropping, um, because they hope that their egg doesn't break on the floor. Um, but you, you can imagine that there are many, many possible solutions to this problem. Here's uh, just another example, paper chairs. Uh, you can have the students work to understand about anatomy and what is needed to hold a chair and you can have students um, measure the different heights and weights of people in the class to determine what kind of chair is, how, how, what kind of weight the chair has to support and then they'd have to design a chair using only newspapers and rubber bands. And I'd show this one, this is an example from some teachers uh, here in Indonesia the last time I was here and these are the three different chairs that were that they designed uh, for their project. Okay, uh, so those are just some examples. There are many good ones uh, and when you have that when you have that real world uh, experience then I think the students are, are um, very passionate and excited. So I wanted to talk about at our university, just the next part, this next short part here. Uh, we have been developing STEM learning materials for about 12 years, and we do them for all age groups. And 
uh, when we design our materials, we start with a theoretical framework. And these are some of the frameworks that we are using now. Now you will see that, of course, we want to include science, uh, science and math knowledge, but we are also interested in other aspects of the student's development. So one is we're interested in increasing student's identity uh, as a mathematician uh, or someone who can do math, student's interest in STEM education uh, and STEM careers, and then uh, something we call youth-based participatory research, which is derived from the health sciences field in which youth identify a problem in their community, uh, work on a solution to solve it, and then take action. Jadi ada tiga kerangka atau framework ya yang digunakan di uh, apa namanya digunakan oleh Dr. Sharon Lok di sana untuk mengembangkan STEM learning material ini tidak hanya sekedar mengintegrasikan matematika dan IPA tapi juga masuk di dalamnya adalah identitas bagaimana membuat siswa itu uh, nantinya menjadi matematikawan kemudian juga uh, interest atau minat ya minat siswa Uh, juga diperhatikan dan yang terakhir adalah youth based participatory research ini jadi uh, itu siswa diajari untuk penelitian men meneliti ya yang basisnya adalah partisipatori atau uh, apa menekankan pada keterlibatan siswa nah, itu penting uh, yang kemudian dikembangkan di sini. I'll just introduce you to each of these theoretical frameworks in case you haven't heard of them before. Um, the first one is identity and um, we use a classic model developed by Carloni and Johnson and this model says that students identity as a scientist or a mathematician uh, to develop it they need to be able to perform the activities of a mathematician they need to be recognized by someone either their peers or a mathematician or even their family as someone who does math. And then the last thing is competence. They need to have the content knowledge, the mathematics knowledge uh, to, to be able to demonstrate that they know mathematics. So this model says that to develop students identity as a mathematician, you need these three parts. And so much of our STEM learning materials, we develop materials using this framework and then we uh, conduct surveys and interviews to see um, if we see changes in their identity. Jadi di aspek di kerangka pertama terkait dengan identitas ya, ketika mengembangkan pembelajaran STEM, itu harus ada tiga hal ya. Jadi performance, siswa itu harus menunjukkan apa dalam proyek STEM itu. Kemudian setelah siswa melakukan performance perlu ada rekognisi, perlu ada pengakuan. Nah setelah itu baru uh, dilakukan evaluasi uh, kompetensi apa yang sudah diperoleh dari pembelajaran STEM yang sudah dilaksanakan, gitu ya. Jadi harus ada tiga itu untuk aspek identity. Okay, I'm going to show some examples. Uh, let me just check this. Yes, okay. So the best way to test for a student's identity as a scientist or a mathematician is to use a survey instrument called uh, the draw a scientist test or the draw a mathematician test. Have you ever seen this? You know, not yet? Okay, I'll show you some examples. So it's very simple. So you ask a, I'll show for science and then for math. So you ask a, a student Um, at any grade level really to draw a scientist and then they will draw a picture based on what they think a scientist is right and so you're interested in understanding what they think a scientist is and especially can a scientist be someone who looks like them yeah. so here's an example from and this is a validated research instrument so you can use it with your students in your classroom and many of my teachers do sorry, the teachers that I work with do, yeah. Okay, so here are some results from the draw a scientist test from uh, students that are in middle school. So take a look at these. So they were asked, 
draw what a scientist looks like. And it turns out that um, this test has been given to thousands of students and all of the drawings look very similar to this. So what do you see? A person with a laboratory coat, yes. <laughs> ya, kira-kira uh, gambar apa ini? Tes menggambar <laughs> seperti apa bentuk saintis gitu. Jadi ilmuwan itu kayak apa sih gitu. Itu tesnya bunyinya seperti itu saja. Uh, disebut mengga tes menggambar uh, hmm. ilmuwan. Ya. Yeah. <laughs> So how we interpret uh, the results? <laughs> yeah, okay. So, all right, so I'll sh just mention some other things. So you see that um, at least two of them have glasses on, right? And they are um, uh, white men, right? <laughs> um, not people of color. Um, they're doing chemistry, so most people, even adults, think that science is chemistry. Uh, and also, uh, there's increasing levels of danger here. <laughs> so, in two of them, there's been an explosion. So, <laughs> scientists are also dangerous, apparently. <laughs> All right. So, so none of the students. Um, it's very rare for a student to draw a female scientist. Um, very rare to draw them doing something such as marine biology, something outside, for example. Yeah. Okay, now I have one for, you're all mathematicians, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. I, all right, now I have one for draw a mathematician. Are you ready? <laughs> Okay, this is a student, this is a, a drawing of a, so they were asked to draw a mathematician and this is from a student in the UK, grade seven, male student. And so that's the drawing that the student did and on the left are the things that the student said about mathematicians. <laughs> Okay, so, so according to this student, mathematicians have no friends, very <laughs> are very unstylish, <laughs> are not married, <laughs> <laughs> have wrinkles in their forehead from thinking so hard, no social life whatsoever, <laughs> and a very short temper. <laughs> Is that, is that you? I, I, don't, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this is, it's actually quite fun and instructive because you can, we, we use this as a pre and post test. So you can um, give a pre-test before you do an activity or a, a module. Um, we do it, we have some summer programs, so the beginning of the summer we do a program and then three, we three or four weeks later we'll do the same test again to see if their, uh, if their drawings have changed. Yeah. Me. Uh, jadi untuk yang identitas, aspek isi identitas di STEM yang paling penting itu adalah membuat uh, siswa kemudian bisa menyukai ya begitu ya e, matematika dan sains misalnya begitu pretes posttesnya tadi disebutkan e, misalnya pakai e, apa namanya tes menggambar tapi kan persepsi siswa terhadap matematika dan sains kan begitu ya harapannya kalau di pretes nanti gambarnya jelek-jelek begini terus kemudian setelah mengikuti pembelajaran STEM di akhir disuruh gambar lagi harapannya ada persepsi yang berubah begitu terkait dengan identitas persepsi terhadap identitas matematikawan ataupun saintis itu penting sekali ya bisa dicoba belum banyak yang mencoba uh, apa namanya hal seperti ini. Oke, okay, that was identity. The other theoretical framework that we use is interest development. And this is the idea that not only do we want students to learn mathematics, we also want them to become interested in mathematics problems and solving mathematics. This is a model that was proposed by 
researchers Hitty and Renninger. And it's quite, quite interesting. It's, uh, many people have tested it. And the idea here is that interest over time changes um, if you provide the right scaffolds for students. So at the beginning, we have what's called situational interest. So they're given a chance to try something and maybe it's done in an interesting way so that triggers their situa situational interest. I'll let you like translate after. And then um, if you give them more background knowledge, more opportunities to try, let's say, solving mathematics problems, that can develop into a sustained situa situational interest. So they become more interested in your classroom. It's sustained, it's not just one time. And then from there, uh, the interest changes from just being in the context that they're in or the situation that they're in to their own personal interest. They, they consider it part of, part of themselves. Um, uh, could be a hobby if it were science, but something that they um, can sustain on their own. And then sustained personal interest is the final phase where a student uh, will seek out mathematics problems on their own. And so if you scaffold your lessons in a way that uh, nurtures interest over time, uh, then you may move the student from not being interested at all to uh, it becoming part of, of what they enjoy. Okay, jadi ini di uh, aspek yang kedua ya, di belajar STEM yaitu interest atau minat, perkembangan minat. Jadi minat itu bisa ditumbuhkan, intinya begitu. Melalui pembelajaran STEM ini, awal mula boleh jadi peserta didik itu minatnya situasional saja. Ya, jadi uh, apa namanya tidak tidak spesifik begitu ya. Kemudian kalau di scaffold, scaffold itu di apa beri bantuan gitu oleh guru, jadi dikondisikan dalam pembelajaran, akhirnya minat itu yang random itu bisa bertahan. Nah, ketika dia bertahan, masih di scaffold lagi minatnya akan makin tumbuh menjadi lebih personal. Jadi uh, apa sudah ada dalam dirinya begitu. Dan setelah itu di scaffold lagi, dibantu lagi, diberi pembelajaran lagi menjadi lebih uh, sustain ya, hanya lebih bertahan lagi minat itu. Jadi dari mulai tidak minat sama sekali sampai menjadi sangat berminat, itu satu proses yang bisa ditumbuhkan. Intinya itu ya di peserta didik melalui pembelajaran STEM ini. Okay, and the last theoretical framework that we are using is um, to make the learning personally relevant. This is an example. Um, it has both science and, and data science in it. Um, uh, and the idea here is of what we're doing is we want to know um, that if we situate learning in the context of community, um, does that improve outcomes for students, both learning outcomes and uh, other outcomes such as interest and identity? And in this case, um, the youth identified a problem. This is a industrial area of uh, near Edwardsville, and they identified the problem of air quality. And so uh, we helped them to measure air quality by looking at, for example, emissions from cars, and then also on the left, one of our graduate students is setting up air quality monitors called Purple Airs, which are not too expensive, and um, they measure air quality, and there is a network all over the world. And they are very large sets of data, so students can learn statistics from these. Uh, but the idea is, by looking at a problem that's in their community, we hope that they become interested, and then uh, also that they decide to take some action, for example, by talking to government officials. Ya, jadi framework yang ketiga terkait dengan participatory research ini pada prinsipnya kan memelibatkan peserta didik ya. Jadi uh, peserta didik dibuat untuk dikondisikan untuk merasa terlibat dengan uh, apa ya kegiatan memecahkan masalah yang dekat dengan dirinya. Kalau tadi dicontohkan di Edwardsville sana kasusnya adalah karena itu kawasan industrial kemudian uh, apa banyak polusi udara nah peserta didik diajak untuk meneliti hal itu memecahkan masalah hal itu mengukur dan seterusnya uh, sehingga 
merasa lebih e, terlibat dalam memecahkan masalah lingkungan sekitar mereka nah, itu yang e, membuatnya menjadi lebih menarik dalam mengikuti pembelajaran STEM yeah. so it's an educational research method I would say yeah Okay, so then the last, just a, a few more slides and then I'd be happy to take questions. Um, when uh, doing STEM student assessment, so these are some of the um, uh, instruments, uh, the, some of the factors that we study when we develop our STEM learning materials. Uh, so we are interested um, in addition, so we will measure their STEM content knowledge, science and math, but we are also interested in their STEM self-efficacy, which is their belief that they can be successful in solving a math problem. STEM identity, which I have mentioned before, and our survey might have the statements such as, I am a math person, or I am someone who look, or someone who looks like me can be good at math. And then they answer if they agree or they do not agree on a scale. Uh, then STEM interest, I like solving math problems or math is interesting to me. And then last, STEM education, at least in the United States, includes making sure that students are aware, are aware of what they can do as a mathematician. Uh, how could they use math in the real world? Um, so our surveys and instruments for our, when we test our learning materials, include both knowledge and uh, many of these. Okay, then I, I just wanted to speak a little bit to the future. STEM education has been uh, really since the early 2000. It, it's been around, there's been a lot written about it. This is one of the most recent article, uh, excuse me, reports that's come from the White House in the United States on STEM education. And this is, um, sort of a redefining of what we mean, or the, the, next, the next stage, the future of STEM education, I will say. Uh, the, the term being used is convergence education. I don't know if you've heard of that here, convergence education, yeah. Uh, so the idea is that, um, I'll show you what it means. So this is a report, it's quite interesting. But here is the idea behind convergence education, is that the report argues that we must move from students learning in their disciplines in isolation uh, to even move beyond multidisciplinary, which means that students might learn um, a common theme but learn separate skills in each dis discipline but around a common theme. And that's the example of the two ice cream scoops. <laughs> Um, to interdisciplinary, where all the parts are together um, and they're linked, but perhaps not um, fully integrated. Uh, so uh, the last and the ideal for STEM education is transdisciplinary, in which you integrate the knowledge and the expertise and the processes of multiple disciplines to solve a real world problem. And that's represented here by this uh, well, we would call it a milkshake or a smoothie, I guess, um, where everything is very tightly blended. And this idea of convergence education is quite difficult because most institutions, such as universities, are set up according to um, the different topics, science or ma and math and, and uh, social studies, for example. But in convergence education, if you went into a classroom, you would not know what subject is being is being taught or emphasized. Uh, okay, so um, I myself uh, have not really understood why it is called convergence education, but uh, yeah. we do understand about the uh, moving from the disciplinary to transdisciplinary. Let me yeah. uh, tell them that. Uh, ah, jadi kalau di sana memang disebut pendidikan convergence gitu ya. Saya tidak tahu convergence Pak Pak Eko convergence itu kan ngerucut begitu ya, tapi uh, di sini uh, apa pemahamannya itu kan dari disiplinary hanya satu subjek, kemudian multidisciplinary jadi uh, apa mulai dikaitkan dengan uh, disiplin ilmu yang lain. Ketika interdisciplinary koneksinya sudah uh, apa ya tampak nyata, 
Nah, transdisciplinary itu gapnya sudah tidak begitu tampak antara satu subjek dengan subjek yang lain. Nah, yang saya pribadi belum uh, terlalu memahami mengapa disebut sebagai convergence university, eh, convergence education, maaf. Nah, so uh, why it is called Convergence education. I mean, yeah. Convergence means okay, convergence coming together, yeah, of coming together, coming together yeah. of the disciplines, the experts, the expertise, and the methods of multiple disciplines coming together to solve the problem. So, um, perhaps you know the government changes the <laughs> the way that it's thinking about it i i think it's the most advanced type of collaboration i would say yeah jadi disebut convergence karena uh, beberapa disiplin ilmu itu bersama-sama ya come together ya bersama-sama kemudian membentuk uh, ini ya dalam pembelajaran gitu ya oke okay. yeah. okay. that might be Um, th I think those are the things that I wanted to talk about, yeah. To Rima Kasi, um, I will take any questions, yeah, if you have, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we still have uh, like 15 minutes, uh, everybody. So, uh, kita tadi banyak mencatat ya, let me talk in bahasa uh, first. Jadi tadi sudah, uh, apa namanya, diberikan beberapa contoh project, ya. Ada yang uh, semuanya menarik. Misalnya bagaimana membuat telur yang dijatuhkan dari ketinggian 2 meter uh, itu keamanannya harus dipikirkan begitu ya dan alatnya hanya seperti itu uh, tampak di layar tadi ya dengan menggunakan stick dan sebagainya tadi itu caranya bagaimana terus kemudian ada lagi membuat paper chair ada kemudian jembatan apa itu uh, yang pakai koin ya biar tidak ambruk bagaimana caranya jadi banyak sekali yang menarik Uh, terus kemudian ada framework juga yang sudah dijelaskan identity kemudian interest youth participatory ya, tadi juga kita masih mengingat terus kemudian sampai terakhir adalah cara mengassessmentnya atau menilainya itu tidak hanya scoring hasil akhir di matematika ataupun IPA-nya tetapi juga self efficacy jadi belief belief itu persepsi terhadap uh, bahwa saya bisa, nah itu ya, itu self efficacy terhadap matematika maupun sains, kemudian identity tadi, kemudian minat dan terakhir ini yang penting wawasan terkait karir yang menggunakan matematika atau IPA, kan sering ke, um, siswa itu bingung kan, saya bisa apa toh dengan menggunakan matematika atau IPA, nah gitu, itu summary beberapa, nah silahkan bagi yang ada pertanyaan question Uh, disampaikan boleh menggunakan bahasa Indonesia ya uh, uh, disampaikan saja kira-kira kalau melaksanakan pembelajaran STEM atau tadi dari penjelasan Bu uh, Bu Sharon itu uh, mana yang kira-kira butuh elaborasi lebih jauh ya silahkan boleh mahasiswa boleh dosen uh, please ask your question oh oke okay, Pak Yudi first question silahkan Pak tolong uh, apa mikrofon Pak Yudi pakai bahasa Inggris langsung saja. Waalaikumsalam Good morning. Uh, terima kasih. Uh, my name is Yudi Akto Pramudia. I'm a lecturer from Physics Department in the event of held by the mathematics department yeah. <laughs> so i believe i think this is the implementation of steam yes. and so this room has the representations of science and math <laughs> <laughs> so probably a lack of techni technology and engineering people there <laughs> so i got my phd from wesleyan university connecticut yeah. uh, in physics of course <laughs> So I'm not expert in pedagogy, so that's why I probably I ask about the pedagogy things. For f the first is the comment about the drawing of scientists and mathematicians. Oh, yeah. The A is all dominated by male figure. I think it's our homework here to make uh, 
next generation thinking about the scientists and mathematicians is also have a women figure. And B, I also working with the research of disability, mm -hmm. science for disability, for, for, for disabled. So I believe that always like a quote unquote a regular persons, not there is no, no representation of Stephen Hawking mm -hmm. figure. Or in the astronomy, we have our friend is uh, Wanda Diaz Merced in, in the US. Uh, she, she's blind, but she is the astronomer professional. You can imagine the astronomy is related to the visual, but she is blind. So I believe that probably next generation using the STEM materi uh, learning material, our uh, student will thinking about disability. Okay, that's the, the question part. The first, uh, while I was working and um, pre prepare my talk on STEAM in astronomy, because I'm also uh, the head of uh, Center of Astronomy Studies in Wadi, uh, I was reading the history about the STEAM in the US. It was, I believe, the abbreviation is not STEAM, but S-M-E-T, that it was uh, inspired by the World, War, the, the World War II and the Sputnik 1957. And the, the government thinking about the young generation of the U.S. need to integrate STEM. And the question is, what is your uh, insight or the prediction about the evolving the STEM learning materials for the future? Because our problem is more complicated and of course different from the past. Uh, probably, uh, hopefully, it's not inspired by the war, <laughs> even though we, we have current war right now. Yeah. But probably, maybe inspired the global warming, let's say, or the food supply shortage, etc. And probably, of course, the, the next generation will have different problem. So, what what is your what is your prediction or the insight about the evolving? material, uh, steam material for the future. And the second, I was reading your publications, 2018 I believe, about the collaboration between the museum, teacher educator, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. about the geoscience I believe. Yeah. And the, I was interested, uh, I, I was trying to try to implement it, you see, because in the next room, we have the observatory so I, I was thinking like probably we can also implement that kind of the concept working with the teacher and the, the observatory staff and the scientists to teach the astronomy in the school. But the problem is we don't have the astronomy in the school curriculum. Mm -hmm. So what is your opinion how to deal with this kind of problem, how to cooperate with the curriculum, the school curriculum that, that doesn't have the astronomy uh, in, in, in the formal curriculum. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for your questions. Yeah, questions. Yeah. Yes. Uh, the first question, okay. Uh, make sure you, do you have them written down <laughs> so I can remember? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and. I'm happy to have a science, a physicist in the room. Yeah. <laughs> um, in my experience, the, in, the inspiration for students now um, is the, the sustainable development goals. And uh, because the student, students, future teachers that I work with, as well as young students in middle and high school, they care about the environment. They care about problems of poverty and hunger and so um, and renewable energy related to climate change. So we have, we have a set of learning materials that we're just finishing revising called uh, Global Challenges. And it, they, there are four modules and the first one deals with feeding the world. It's called Feeding the World. The second is fueling the world. The next is healing the world. And the last is uh, sustaining the world. So that one focuses more on renewable energy. These are um, STEM learning materials for elementary 
girls in particular, so it focuses on girls and also on uh, African American students. And the goal here is um, to show them how STEM or STEAM can solve these global challenges, even if only on a small scale, right? So we, they learn, um, they learn a little bit about uh, nutrition and about what's needed um, for, uh, for example, crops um, and, and having enough crops to feed the world. So I think that's the inspiration for young people now is, and, and alignment, so aligning materials with one or more of the sustainable development goals, I think is good. Uh, the second question, the, oh, astronomy, yeah, yeah. Yes, so my background is in geosciences and uh, we have the same problem that often earth sciences or geosciences, things like oceanography and even in, you know, it's just not taught in, in schools and so it, like astronomy, it's very difficult to include it. Um, uh, yeah, this is a very, this would be a very long discussion, but we approach it by providing teacher workshops outside of school hours so that at least teachers know something about, uh, in your case, astronomy. And we work with the teachers to find where, uh, where in the case of geosciences, we find where it links to the standards, to the standard, US standards for education. And, and then give them the chance to put it in small lessons into their curriculum, even if it's not the main part of the curriculum. We try to find where it, it can be, the topic can be used to teach a core concept. So I think astronomy is very good for that because of the mathematics. I, I think you could use it in many ways. Uh, or if for statistics, for example, um, by looking at astronomy data sets, you could teach about statistics. Yeah. So it's good, astronomy is good because it's an interesting context for students to learn. I'm, does that answer the question or would you like more? Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, question. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. So please, the next question from students, maybe. Any question? Ah, silakan. Ah, <laughs> from Mike Silver again. It's okay. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, uh, my name is Aan Hendroanto, and I am the lecturer from Mathematic Education Department. Uh, last semester, I did. STEM activities in my mathematics classroom in uh, geometric transformation mm -hmm. and the activities is designing the street and the bridge yeah. uh, yes and the student have to design uh, the shortest uh, street and also bridge which connect two cities yeah. uh, and, and it has to be shortest why because uh, how, how, how could, how would you say the, the money for the project need to be uh, as minimal as possible. Yeah. That's why the student have to design uh, the shortest way from the cities, from city A for example, and then goes to the first river and then there is bridge in which the bridge has to be perpendicular uh, on the river and then goes to the next, uh, f to the second river and then there is bridge again and then go to the second cities, uh, mm. for example, city, uh, nice. city B. Uh, in these activities, the students are very interesting and uh, they also did trial and error uh, uh -huh. in designing the, uh, uh, the street. But I found the problem is uh, they cannot understand or they cannot implement the mathematics, the mathematic concept to design the street. So that, uh, that's why they, all, uh, they only uh, did trial and error without knowing the concept of mathematics behind the activities. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, my purpose is my student has to do 
a translation move and also maybe reflection and any other transformation in geometry uh, to design the strip. But uh, I found that my students uh, enjoy just did the, the, the designing by uh, trial and error. But the result is very various and uh, the difference between the shortest part by using the concept of the mathematics in uh, geometric transformation and also based on the result from the students from many uh, different groups uh, is not that significant. Uh, that sur surprised me. Uh, uh, that's the sign that my student uh, is very hardworking student because they design so many <laughs> possible way and then they can found the uh, shortest uh, street and the difference with the correct answer is just 0 0.02 centimeters and that's uh, surprised me yeah. uh, but my question in here is how can we facilitate students so that they not only just do the trial and error uh, strategy but also uh, implement the concept of mathematics because in these activities my role is just to facilitate the students and I cannot uh, give them the clue directly to the concept because if I did then they stop thinking they will stop trial and error that's the, uh, the essence of the STEM education right uh, I want to uh, I want to avoid uh, the students uh, from just do the uh, 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 the concept by using the concept. Uh, I want them to do the trial and error, and then they try to uh, implement the concept of the mathematics, and then they found the answer. The only concept in mathematics that my student use is just the uh, Pythagorean theorem, because that's also how to find the length of the street. Okay, so that's my question: How? Can we facilitate students so that in the activities or in the discussion, they not only use the trial and error strategy, but also use the concept of mathematics behind the activities? Yeah. That's all. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a common problem. That's it's a hard question to answer. It depends on the activity. Um, uh, when you have something like that, building a structure, then you know we always have fairly detailed um, sh uh, data collection instruments for them where they have to, for each trial that they do, they have to describe, and you probably did too, but they need to describe um, what their solution was, and very, very explain it very clearly, um, write down um, any measurements that they had for that solution, and any observations of why the solution didn't work. So a, a lot of data recording um, so that hopefully then by recording the data they start to see um, the reason for the failure. And so the, so the recording the data combined with some reflection questions after each trial is the way that we scaffold our learning materials. I agree with you that it it's especially with younger children, it can be difficult to get to the mathematical concepts because they're just having fun building it. Uh, I think, at least for younger children, maybe that's okay. That, I mean, if they are enjoying what they're doing and enjoying the learning, maybe at the younger grades it's okay. But I don't have a good answer. I would have to look at the activity a little bit better. But thank you for that important point, yeah. And actually, this is not, uh, this is a university level, uh, yeah, this is the uh, subject in the uh, education department, uh, and uh, things that the students will reflect on geometry transformations concept, but the students only use the lies by the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, yeah. concept to solve the problems. So I think, do you think that it is related to uh, how we design the project of STEM? I mean, in the cycle of the project of STEM, we have a purpose and then we have the project, but then we, when we test what we want is not appear there, uh, not, uh, what is it, 
it's not so equal, yeah, that's the fail failure, so how, maybe we, we have to redesign or something in the case of Pan? Well, uh, yeah, so you mean re this using this for your STEM learning materials, yeah. the design process, yeah. uh, right? Pan said that uh, yeah. he developed, uh, but, but, uh, but the design are failed to, you know, to make the students grasp yes. the concept uh, yeah. that he wants. Yeah. So I think we also maybe uh, with the materials, design, yeah, uh, right. Yeah, so you could. I mean, that would be an interesting research study too. You could interview the students um, after the project to see their decision making process. Like how? So you could actually interview your your university students and say, okay, why did you choose this solution? Um, and you know, to try to get at their thinking. Uh, their mathematical thinking around the problem and by interviewing them you would find out w where the gap is between what, where you want them to be and where they are. Yeah. Maybe they need a, a related example that applies the concepts that you want them to apply before they get to the STEM activity that you've designed. Maybe an example. Yeah. Jadi uh, menerapkan cycle ini berarti perlu beredesign uh, misalnya term and conditionnya apa? Boleh jadi kamu nggak boleh pakai konsep ini, tapi kamu coba konsep yang ini misal begitu di disepakati dulu dengan si, uh, mahasiswa. Nah, mau pengennya pakai konsep geometri transformasi kok tiba-tiba yang dipakai hanya uh, teorema Pythagoras kan gitu ya? Nah, misalnya seperti itu. Walaupun pada STEM sebenarnya boleh berbagai cara begitu ya, Pak Ania. Yeah. Oke. Okay. That explanation answer your question, yeah, Pak, yeah? Okay, thank you. <laughs> Any other, please? Uh, I think the last question, probably from students. Last questions, please. Oh, yeah. Oh, ada dua. Okay, I will take them all. <laughs> <laughs> Both of you, please. Yeah, dua pertanyaan. <laughs> you first. Okay, please. Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Sebelumnya mohon maaf kalau masalah soal bahasa Inggris saya sangat kurang jadi saya punya banyaknya menggunakan bahasa Indonesia. Untuk penjelasan dari sama, sama. Ya. Sama, sama. <laughs> ya, dari penjelasan tadi sama, saya sama. Oh, iya. untuk nama saya. Ardan Taufik Rahman dari mahasiswa pendidikan matematika Universitas Ahmad Dahlan dari penjelasan tadi saya merangkum ada tentang pandangan siswa dalam belajar yang pertama itu pandangan tentang siswa terhadap mat matematikawan itu pandangannya bagaimana sebelum mereka belajar dan sesudah belajar pandangan siswa tentang matematika wan itu bagaimana nah, tetapi di sering terjadi di Indonesia ini terutama saya juga sering menjumpai teman-teman saya maupun siswa di SMA SMP itu di pertengahan pembelajaran sering berpikiran atau memiliki pikiran di saat pertengahan itu ini pelajarannya untuk kedepannya dibuat untuk apa sih dan sering terjadi juga pertanyaan ini belajar matematika untuk masa depan untuk buat apa gitu loh nggak ada ya nggak ada gunanya ya. untuk belajar saja gitu hanya untuk ni untuk mencari nilai saja gitu kadang kadang terbesit pertanyaan pertanyaan kayak gitu di pertengahan pembelajaran gitu sering terjadi jadi saya juga sering muncul pernyataan kayak gitu ya dan juga sulit untuk menjawabnya agar kembali lagi ke jalan yang lurus untuk belajar kembali gitu Nah, pertanyaannya yaitu bagaimana solusinya agar kami siswa maupun mahasiswa di pertengahan pembelajaran itu menghilangkan 
banyak pikirannya terhadap uh, soal pembelajaran itu berguna untuk di masa yang akan datang maupun di kehidupan realitanya gitu terima kasih thank you mas Ardan his name is Ardan uh, students of mathematics education department too and he concerned with the students view on mathematics like your mm-hmm. uh, you know belief for self efficacy and so on mm-hmm. um, he he found oftenly that students think that mathematics is useless mm-hmm. um, and also uh, at least they do not know uh, the use of mathematics it is not meaningful at all mm-hmm. the, the problem the lesson at schools and he asked like a best practice how to make the students interested and then they know probably the insight of uh, what is the use of mathematics in the future mm-hmm. that's actually because he is also a future teacher yeah. <laughs> yeah please yeah i i think that that's why uh turning some of your math lessons into stem lessons can be the way to do that because uh stem starts from a real world problem uh so the instructional design method that we use is the 5e is do you teach that here 5e method um f- for designing a lesson okay yeah um it, by an it was developed by an organization called uh bscs and it's the way to design it's a method for designing a lesson and the 5e and it starts with engage is the first e and then ooh i hope i remember them now <laughs> uh uh then um explore is the next uh then explain is the next then evaluate okay and then extend okay so in this when we design our lessons we use this framework and the engage is where you start with an interesting um could be a video or ask them a, a a real world problem or show them an example of using math so for example showing the video that i showed is a way to get students interested in thinking the idea is to get them interested in thinking about designing packages right and then explore before you explain a concept you actually just have them explore a, a general problem uh, and try to solve the problem without the teacher explaining it and then after they've had a chance to try then you explain it to them then after that um you evaluate their understanding by a small test post test or asking them questions and then the last thing would be to extend it to show them how it could apply um in another in solving a problem in the real world so that in by using that we try to relate it to the real world okay yeah ya mas Arden jadi itu masalah klasik ya jadi uh, membuat pembelajaran matematika meaningful bermakna bagi peserta didik artinya mengerti gunanya gitu ya di pembelajaran Dr. Sharon Lok menyarankan misalnya ini menggunakan sinta pembelajaran 5E ya engage explore explain evaluate dan extend yang paling penting adalah yang engage dan extend di akhir itu sama-sama diawali dengan masalah nyata kehidupan sehari-hari dan diakhiri juga nih interpretasinya di extend juga di uh, permasalah apa namanya konteks sehari-hari tersebut begitu ya jadi uh, pada prinsipnya adalah semuanya harus dibuat kontekstual Jadi uh, apa namanya memecahkan hal yang memang dekat dengan siswa, siswa butuh itu. Nah, itu yang sering uh, apa namanya kita di Indonesia punya problem based learning ya. Nah, cuman masalahnya kadang masalah yang diangkat itu tidak terlalu dekat dengan tidak terlalu dibutuhkan oleh peserta didik. Nah, jadi itu juga merupakan PR bagi kita semua apalagi calon-calon guru matematika kalau saudara masih membuat peserta didiknya itu bosan berarti ya Anda mengulangi kesalahan yang sama dengan guru-guru terdahulu. Itu yang Mas Ardan ya. Intinya 
e, membuat pembelajarannya meaningful bermakna ditunjukkan maknanya saya juga pernah di posisi saudara ya saya bertanya apa gunanya mempelajari analisis real Oh, I see. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, same question. Yeah. Begitu, Mas Adhan? Yeah, okay. Terima kasih, Mas Adhan. Well, there's some truth to that, right? I mean, yeah. it's hard to show. It's hard to show. Yeah. The relevance of songs that I mean, they have understanding that, you know, by, by knowing the more in-depth mathematical concepts, they will be better at, at explaining to them Dan kemudian pembelajaran STEM ini patut dicoba ya untuk kemudian uh, imam, apa ya, mengurangi atau mengecahkan masalah yang tadi. Terakhir ya, tadi ada yang bertanya, silakan. Ya. Nah, ini terakhir setelah itu uh, sesi ini kita akhiri. Waktunya sudah habis ya, silakan. Sebutkan nama mas, terus ini boleh berbahasa Inggris silakan. Ya. Uh, izin ya pak, bahasa Inggris saya tidak bagus tapi saya mencoba ya pak, oh, mencoba ya. sebagai latihan Silahkan pak, please, please do okay. uh, My name is Hairola, I'm from the Mathematics Education Program uh, Maybe I want to ask to Dr. Sharon about his historical first The question is uh, What problem underlies the rapid development of STEAM in American in the past? Uh, and the last question, uh, as explained by Dr. Sharon early one of the application is drawing scientists. Uh, what if there are students who are not interested in the learning style of drawing? Uh, is there a solution that the teacher has prepared for implementation of STEM Thanks. Okay. okay. Thank you, Mas Herula. Uh, the first is about uh, the problems which then originate the STEM in America. Itu ya, yang mendasari masalah yang mendasari. Uh, yang mendasari uh, STEM, STEM perkembangan STEM di Amerika okay. dulu. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, uh, He want to ask about the history of the emerging of STEM in United States. Uh, what makes it developed? What is the problem mm -hmm. uh, causing the development? Thank yeah, STEM yeah. is important. That the yeah. first question yeah. be the first question. Yeah, yeah, yes. Thank you for your question. Um, good morning. <laughs> uh, so uh, I. Uh, the, it emerged from the government, and uh, it started, I would say, around 2000, 2002, 2003. Um, I actually worked for the government um, in uh, 2006, 2008, and so I saw STEM, personally, I saw it emerging. Um, first, it was just an abbreviation. And in fact, the abbreviation was S-M-E-T, SMET. <laughs> yeah, and, but that doesn't sound very nice. Yeah, so they just rearranged the words to STEM. Uh, but the reason is that there were predictions based on the population and the demographics of uh, the number of um, people being born and the number of people retiring um, and leaving the workforce that there would not be enough workers who knew technology and mathematics and science and so the problem was concern for economic development of the US as well as like cybersecurity of the US yeah uh, things like that so yeah workforce Oke, okay. yeah. jadi yang utama adalah karena angkatan kerja ya. Jadi e, pemerintah US itu menghitung angka kelahiran, kemudian yang e, apa namanya, yang pensiun dan sebagainya, kemudian berkesimpulan bahwa oh nanti banyaknya orang yang akan belajar e, ataupun yang menjadi tulang punggung begitu ya, itu akan semakin sedikit sehingga harus e, istilahnya. Uh, diajarkan atau dimasukkan dalam kurikulumnya agar uh, para siswa itu 
ada yang belajar engineering, ada yang belajar matematik dan sebagainya, tapi tidak terpisah-pisah kan? Jadi makanya mereka mengintegrasikan kayak gitu. Jadi lebih ke faktor demografi. Mirip-mirip dengan negara kita yang mau menerapkan kurikulum 2013, ingat eh, apa tantangan eksternalnya atau oh, sorry tantangan internalnya adalah 2045 kita dapat bonus demografi, nah gitu ya. Jadi hampir-hampir mirip semua eh, workforce dan juga uh, apa namanya mm -hmm. ekonomi faktor dan sebagainya. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, maybe just clarify too that not just to fill um, simple jobs, but through STEM education, the hope is that students learn creativity, mm -hmm. critical thinking, and how to work in a team, so that it can be innovation, which leads to economic growth. Yeah. yeah. Jadi tidak yeah. hanya uh, apa namanya belajar di core-nya saja, tapi juga tentang kolaborasi, kerjasama ya, teamwork, kemudian uh, kreativitas gitu ya dalam belajar STEM itu sehingga nantinya bisa mengisi tidak hanya simple job saja ya job-job sederhana melainkan job-job uh, yang membutuhkan tadi ya kerjasama kreativitas gitu ya sehingga nanti juga refer uh, muaranya juga ke arah pertumbuhan ekonomi oke okay, thank you the, the second question the last question tadi uh, tentang oh tadi yang drawing sandiaga inggris ya oh yeah yeah I remember yeah 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 If yeah. the students not interested to, to do the drawing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, so I find this problem a lot that my science students say they don't like to draw or they can't draw. Um, but I try to convince them to do it anyway. But if you had a student that said, no, no way, then you could have them describe it in words and you could record it. Yeah. Yeah. So, menjelaskan tertulis atau ya berbagai cara dilakukan guru intinya ya ditanya langsung bagaimana menurutmu uh, saintis itu atau ilmuwan itu gitu ya Jadi penjelasan beliau disuruh nulis nanti direkam misalnya record it digitally right yeah, yeah you direkam. could um, you could actually um, record them with your phone and and yeah, play it back ditanya yeah. dan direkam <laughs> gitu ya oke okay. Please give applause to Dr. Sharon Locke for this uh, very uh, great session, the, the first session. Uh, I think this is the end of the first session about the general lecture about STEM. Uh, and I hope that you all have a very great insight Okay. Now I think uh, we have to move to the second session. It is the academic writing, and I think it is for lecturer. Do we need uh, like time to make arrangement, paan or the committee for the second session? Um, Would we? Susunan kursi akan seperti ini saja, Pak Pam. Oh, butuh. Ya, begini saja. Oke, para mahasiswa gimana? Akan tetap di sini atau bagaimana? Oh, gitu. Oh, Oke. Okay. Oh, Oke. Okay. Uh, though this session would be uh, mostly for lecturers, but I think if the students uh, still, uh, you know, have an interest to be here to, you know, like to uh, listen to the Explanation it is also okay ya jadi boleh boleh di sini para mahasiswa kalau ingin uh, tetap mengikuti kegiatan ini walaupun kegiatan yang kedua ini mainly uh, sebenarnya untuk dosen di academic writing ya silahkan kalau tetap ingin di sini juga boleh bapak ibu dosen barangkali bisa maju ke depan untuk kemudian berdiskusi lebih uh, intens begitu dan kalau memang banyaknya tidak terlalu banyak boleh saja uh, kita bentuk apa kursi di depan juga tidak apa-apa ya Bu Dwi atau bagaimana I before students before you leave I just wanted to say congratulations for choosing mathematics um, and I wish you the best in your university and in becoming math teachers what you're doing is 
very important for the world and for your students in, in Indonesia. So good luck, best wishes. We would like to thank to our speaker, Mrs. Dr. Sharon Luck, or Ibu Sharon, and the moderator, Mr. Afid Istiandaru, MPD. As we enter the coffee break and group photo session, we ask the ladies and gentlemen to stand up. And we ask the documentation team to direct us. Okay, the next agenda, session 2 will be held at 11. In session 2, we will discuss about academic writing. And ladies and gentlemen, session 1 is closed. Thank you. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.